Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and today we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at the T310 from Zontes. The adventure bike. Oh. Roll the intro. Oh well let's get cracking. Crack. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> As you saw from our previous report on the 310 range back in February this year, these bikes have been in development for three years and have had millions spent on that development. All new design engine, all new design body shapes, into nothing that Zontis have ever done before. Keyless activation by way of a proximity key fob, which if I walk away, should lock the bike onto a full left lock, which is there because I've moved away with the key. One and a half metre range it has. Dun, da, 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 uh, they're about 10 metres away now. Hello. I am some distance from the bike. <laughs> you are quite away. Oh, there you go. Maybe it's a time sensitive thing. Oh, it could be. Oh no, the alarm's gone off. All right, well, it does lock itself when you walk away. Well, has it locked itself? Well, let's find out. No, it hasn't. But you can't start it, right? No, nope, I can't start it. it on. Ah. No, no so, I can't. So it is deactivated. OK, so closer. So you can accidentally walk away with Un your key. Unlocking. Right there. No. Nope. That's about bit, three metres. Two metres. No. Nope. Oh, there we go. So two metres. Two metres-ish. So it's not one and a half metres, it's about two metres. But let's be honest, who's going to split hairs over half a metre? Right, so you've left home, yes. left your key at home on the driveway. He's gone for a walk. He seems to have gone a long way. It still seems to be working. Yeah, okay, all right. Now let's turn it off. So the bike is off. Let's see if we can start it again. On full lock. Ah! It's turned itself off. Okay. Right, I can't start the bike. All right, how far did you go? Um, probably about 10 meters away. Okay, well that's not too bad considering I turned it off. All right. I didn't want to go too far because of the microphone. OK, well, I'm not quite sure what to say about that, really. Yeah. Right, this needs a final test. Yeah. So, what we should do, you've ridden the bike, yes? Yeah. So you've arrived where you're going. Yes. So you've, you've arrived. Let's turn it on. Yeah. You've arrived, you've used the bike. We've got there. Yep, turn it off. We've switched it off, but we've forgotten to, to turn it. off the ignition. Okay, so walk away. So I'm going to walk away. I'll go right over here. Stop there. I'm, I'm going into the pub or a, car, a bike show or something. So I'm gone. Now, Joe Bloggs over there is going to see this bike. Oh no! I don't think I can steal this bike! Let me try! Oh, well, the steering has locked. locked. No, I can't unlock it. So the steering go. didn't lock. No, it only does it when you switch it off, off, I think. OK. However, so, yeah, so if you the immobiliser does work because nothing. I mean, who actually gets off the bike and doesn't lock it anyway? I don't know it anybody who goes, right, I'm at the pub. I've just done my kill switch. I'll leave my key in there well, what if and go for a pint. That's an another. All you've got to do is that. Well, hold it. But there's another scenario, of course. And it's locked. If you've got now, it locked. Now it locks in place. Now it won't unlock. But you've done that. Yeah. And you've come to your bike, oh, I just need to move it. You can't move it because the steering lock's on, right? The only yes. way to take the steering lock off is to switch it on. Yes, which it does because you've got the key and you're yeah. on there. Right, now. But you've had to switch it on just to move the bike. Hang on. Which is fine. Hang on. But I've locked you, that. But then forget to Now just put on. that key over there. 
Walk okay, there. the over, steering over is locked. The key is literally three meters away. So, no, it doesn't. Okay. No, just... I'm sorry, this is a thorough test. We have to do this properly. Right, you are now about two and a half meters away. Okay, no. There. There it is. Right. Pace it. One, two. Literally two meters. So it isn't one and a half meters, it's two. Get your facts right, Zontis. I wonder if when the, when the battery runs down a bit, that'll be better. Yeah, it's no big deal. No. It's a close range. And let's be honest, like I said, if anybody, it's the same as leaving your key in the ignition. So nobody, and let's be honest, when everyone parks their bike, nobody parks their bike like that. Everyone no. parks their bike like that. Unless you've got everybody. a centre stand. Unless, of course, you've got a centre stand, which uh, this doesn't have, so yeah. it's not an issue. But nobody leaves their key in the ignition and walks away. If they do, they're a bit stupid and asking for their bike to be nicked. Yeah. The only difference is, you, instead of taking the key out, you just push that. Problem solved. So, it works. Right, let's move on. Yes. Of course, the advantage of having this proximity key is that there's no ignition barrel, so it's a lot more difficult to steal. You don't get your keys stuck in the lock. There's no sticky locks. Uh, the keys don't bend or snap or anything like that. Mm. The only disadvantage I can see is if your start button doesn't work. But I do see a lot more advantages than disadvantages. Absolutely. So let's take a closer look at these switches, which, of course, there are many of. Now, for this experiment or demonstration, I will put the proximity thing on here. And you can have it on there. But mostly, just stick it in your pocket. Now, of course, with that in range, you can easily just push that once and it turns everything on and unlocks the steering. Fuel pump whirs over and you're good to go. So what do we have? Well, when you start the bike, you do have a nice subtle red backlight on all of the switches. And I shall demonstrate that by a quick startup. So hold the clutch in. Like so. Very nice indeed. So let's start on this side. Well, first you've got your ignition, you've got your kill switch there, and you've got your light switch. Now it does have daytime running lights, which we will show you now. And when you switch the lights on, you've also got your seat release button, which is electric. You push that and it releases the seat. So let's show you that. And you've got your switch that goes from eco to sport mode. Now, if you look on the dash here, you've got an S, push it in, it goes to E. And I'll explain a bit more about that when we're on the road. So onto this side. Well, you first of all have the lights, main beam and dip. So currently in dip, and we'll switch them to main beam. You've also got your indicators now left indicator like so and right indicator like so and then back into the middle to cancel it doesn't have the traditional push-in style to cancel uh, there's only one slight disadvantage to this that i see when you've got gloves on if you're moving to the left on a couple of occasions i've <coughs> caught the horn and startled a couple of motorists it's only been a couple of times not all the time, so it's not a major issue. You've also got here your petrol release flap, so let's do that. And you've got your screen up and down, so let's show you that now. You push this button here. You also have your hazard flashes. And you've got your ABS switch and you push and hold that and the ABS light goes out. I personally don't see why you would want to turn the ABS off. Perhaps if you're off-road, maybe. Other than that, leave it on.
310 is powered by a 312cc single cylinder engine with four valves and double overhead cams. It uses an aluminium and nickel carbide plated cylinder which helps dissipate the heat more efficiently. That in turn makes the bike perform better. It is water cooled and uses a Delphi EFI system. Friction and vibration is reduced by using a mid-mount balance shaft and it uses a dry sump with external oil frame reservoir. So what? I hear you state. Well, it reduces engine drag and provides better fuel consumption, which is incidentally around 70 to 75 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. The brakes are Bosch ABS front and rear, which you can switch off via the switch on the dash. You also get upside down forks on the front and on the rear, a monoshock with a nitrogen airbag. So before we take this bike out on the road, let me talk to you a little bit more about this engine. Well, oh, that's really comfortable. <laughs> this engine develops 35 brake horsepower and 22 pounds foot of torque. The tank holds 15 litres and the gearbox has six gears. Now, very comfortable and very relaxing position. I certainly feel like I'm on a bigger bike and we shall confirm that when we get it out on the road. Now I have been riding this bike around quite a lot for the past week so I've had a good insight as to what it rides like, what it corners like, how it handles, how it feels and how it responds. So we'll talk a bit more about that whilst we're out on the road and then we'll come back and discuss it further. As you pull away, you do get a little bit of sense that there's a vibe there um, at the bottom end, but um, it's more of a sound than uh, anything else. You certainly don't get any feel that it's vibey. Um, not at all, to be honest. Uh, it's very, very comfortable, very relaxing even, I would say. And I love the way these, these handlebars move around with the, the guards at the front there. That's really nice. Now with the feedback, it's um, as I say, there's nothing to the handlebars whatsoever. You've got a little bit of vibe from that sound, but nothing feeling vibey. So that's definitely a positive point. It does remind you, of course, that this is a 312cc bike and not a 600 or a 500. Uh, but uh, it's a very commanding position when you're riding it. Really do like it. I would say is the stalks. Now um, the mirrors are great and you can see really well out of them but the stalks are not quite long enough and I would expect them to be a little bit longer because I can see a bit too much arm and not enough road. Other than that I've got no complaints whatsoever. I love this commanding position. It certainly makes you feel as though you're on a much much bigger bike.
Balance is great. I mean, I don't need to put my foot down here, and I'm pulling in. Nothing coming. We're good. Round you go. Yes, very nice to manoeuvre at slow speeds. And we're back out again. Oh, very nice. See how she handles on a corner. Oh my God! I can't believe I just referred to a bike as a she. I said to myself I wouldn't do that. Okay. Well, here we go. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, even change down a gear though. Nice, constant 30 mile an hour, and onto the dual carriageway in sport mode and see how she picks up. Oh, this rides so nicely, really comfortable. I love the way this uh, dashboard is laid out here. You've got uh, the um, instrument cluster here with the time and the odometer, uh, the gear indicator, and of course your mileage and your fuel, and whether it's in sport mode or um, eco mode. And we're going to try that out in a minute. So as I slow down here, I'm going to put it into eco mode. And then we're going to slow down to 30 miles an hour in third gear, and we pull away. Okay, alright, yeah, you've got a bit of, yeah, that's alright, that's not bad, okay. Um, you can definitely feel a slight difference when you get to 7,000 RPM. It's not a huge amount of difference, but there is a slight difference. Then we're going to do the same again, put it in sport mode, and bring it down to 30 miles an hour in third gear, and pull away. Oh, yeah, and there's definitely a difference. Yes, it's not huge, I'll be honest, it's not huge, but there is definitely a difference. It's, it's a more of an urgency, should we say, than um, there is if you're in eco mode. Now, don't forget, when it gets to 7,000 RPM, when you're in eco mode, it automatically switches to sports mode, depending on how aggressive you're being with your riding. And then uh, when you come down again in the gears, it uh, switches back to eco mode automatically. Well, now we're back, I want to address the issue of the microphone. I do apologise, unfortunately, the fluff I had on there still didn't do its job. But we'll research that for the next video. However, I do want to report that it rode really, really nicely. This position is not only comfortable, it's relaxing. The arm's length is perfect. The buttons are very easily accessible. Like I said on the ride, the only thing I don't like is these stalks I think should be a bit longer because I'm seeing more arm and not enough road in my eye. However, I don't really have anything to fault. It feels like you're on more of a 500 or a 600 and certainly not a 310 um, or a 312 for that matter. I'm really impressed with how it pulls. It pulls away really nicely. You do get that little bit of a buzz from the engine sound-wise, but no feedback through these handlebars whatsoever. Really very impressed with it. 
Online, it does state it has a 110 front tyre and a 150 rear. Well, it doesn't. This has a 110 front tyre and a 160 rear, which is what you find pretty much on a 600 or a 700cc. What I will say that I am impressed about, now there's still a bit of heat smell. Oh, engine's still a bit hot. <laughs> the exhausts are cold touch. Now, I'm going to put my hands around these. So this is an experiment here. They're actually stone cold. The engine ooh, is still a bit warm, but the exhausts are stone cold. Not just cool, stone cold. They are cold touch exhausts and they really, really are. Which means any passenger who's got their feet down here are not going to burn themselves and you're not going to burn your legs. That's pretty impressive. Now, one thing I will say that I tried to say on the bike, but I don't think it came off very well because of the wind, is the switchable from eco mode to sport mode automatically when you get to 7,000 RPM. It did do that. There was a slight difference, not a lot, but a slight difference. But when it's in sport mode all the time, you can definitely feel there's a, a better pickup. And that's because it uses a different mapping system for sport mode than it does eco mode. I do like the fact that it's if, if it's in eco mode at 7,000 RPM, it recognises the aggressiveness of your accelerating and switches to sport mode and then back to eco when you come off the revs. I don't know that I would bother, to be honest. I'd probably just keep it in sport mode all the time. It has an alloy swing arm down here, and over here there is a, a rubber-mounted disc lock storage mount. Very handy. And it comes with these really nicely designed diamond cut alloy wheels, which I really like. Yeah, very nice. I like the back ones and they're on the front too. Lovely. Marvelous. And down here is a very conveniently placed USB charging socket. Splendid. Now these do come with the ability to have luggage side panniers and the top box. They don't come with it as standard, which I apologise, I did say they do come as standard in the previous video. They don't. Unfortunately, you have to pay for them, and they are £900. But they are aluminium, and they are very good quality. You've got the side racks and the top rack with the big boxes that go on the side. In fact, here's a little bit of a video from the last one, and you can see them on there. However, if you do not want them, you can go for the Shad 35 or the Shad 36 boxes, which are similar but more rounded. And they are around the same price, about a grand, to be honest. It's a lot of money for some boxes. Now, we showed you before, under the seat is the lithium battery. Now, I'm just going to open that up again and show you. The only thing you don't get is any under-seat storage, because in here is wiring and stuff. But why do you need under-seat storage? Surely that's what a scooter's for. Or the boxes. Or a rucksack. <laughs> the bike weighs in at 149 kilos. Not anymore, it doesn't. 349 kilos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> However, it is, as modelled here by Malcolm, 2 metres long, 1.3 metres tall and 850 millimetres wide with an 840 millimetre seat height. Which is just about right for me. I can put my feet flat on the floor. And you are 5 foot 11? Yeah. And a bit? And a bit. Yeah. With a regular leg. As opposed to an Not irregular that. leg? You know when you buy trousers, you buy regular long or short or whatever, regular, right. which is like 30, I'm not, 29, Okay, 30, move on, whatever. yes, all right, whatever. As far as colours, you can have grey and blue, or you can have this grey and orange, and this grey and orange, I feel, is much nicer. Yes, it is. So let's look at some more design features. Well, I love these crash bars. They're very sturdy, very strong, and they look great, and they give the bike a whole lot more presence. Really, really do like it. It's a very sturdy bike. What do you think? Mm. Brilliant. 
I don't know what Malcolm thinks, but I think they put a lot of effort into the design of this. Now, you, even the little fairings down here, of course, it makes it more aerodynamic. These little bits down here. And this, I love this design. I think it looks awesome. Really am impressed with all the lines and the angles. I do like a good angle. These are lovely, very well designed, and actually a beautiful bike. Beautiful indeed. It makes it very reflective. There's lots of surfaces that reflect light in different positions. They do. I quite like that. And even though we've had it out and about, when it gets dirty, it still looks quite clean. That's an advantage for yeah. someone who doesn't like cleaning bikes. Or anything. Now, as we said, this battery is lithium, and if you leave it for a long time, it will go into deep sleep. There is a button here. Push it, it goes green, look. And that is a battery wake-up button. Now, you may or may not have noticed that this bike has an electronic seat. And you may or may not have noticed that you need to press a button to open said electronic seat. If your battery is dead, it is under the seat, how do you deal with it? Because you can't, of course, open the seat. You also cannot open the petrol flap, which is also electronic. Yeah. And that is a concern that some people have raised, and we ourselves raised. Well, we're now going to tell you how to address this problem. So what happens if that horrible event ever actually occurs, where your battery fails? So you can't open the seat, because that's where the battery is. You can't open the petrol flap. And you need to get into the bike to charge it well. Under here, Malcolm is now um, in a non the girl kind of way pointing out, there is a flap, and in that flap is a 2.5 millimeter DC charge socket. What do I plug in there, I hear you ask? Well, one of them. It's a 0-67M Optimate lead. That comes in at $19.99 if you want to buy one. And what plugs into that? Well, this does. It is the Optimate 1 charger. Now, that does lithium batteries and normal lead batteries. Together, they come to a price of £60. £39.99 for the charger and £19.99 for the lead. Now, if you buy a brand new bike at full price from AR Motorcycles, we will give you that for free because we feel it's quite essential and alleviates any worries you may have. Otherwise, you've got to pay 60 quid for it. However, I do want to point out that I don't understand why people are that worried. Just because it's new technology on this bike, it isn't new technology. Cars have had electronic petrol flaps and keyless starts for years. Have you, with your car that has that, ever been concerned about whether your petrol flap will open or whether your car won't start? I would wager that's a no. So why are you worrying about it on a bike? Because it's new technology? I don't see the issue. It's actually worse on a car because you don't have a flap to open the bonnet and charge the battery, so bike's better, right? So, overall, I've been riding this bike for a week and I absolutely love it. To and from work, it's really comfortable, really easy to use, really easy to manoeuvre because it's light, 149 kilos. Oh, I, I can't really fault it. It's very predictable. If you're filtering, you can very easily filter through things and not worry about you know, losing your balance or whatever. It's, it's super easy to ride. Absolutely. It, it's so planted on the road. It's so smooth. You can weave really well. You can take corners really nicely. It's fantastic. I really do like it. I will say, and it's probably fair to say, that when I do my Normandy journey next year... Coming to that? Yeah, maybe. If we go to Normandy, perhaps, or if not, I will go to Normandy, because I've always wanted to do that. When I do, I don't think I'll be going on this bike. I'd probably feel more comfortable on an 800 adventure bike with all the boxes on, because with that extra weight on the French auto routes, I'd probably need a bit more than a 300. That's not to say this bike wouldn't do it. No, absolutely. But I just feel perhaps I wouldn't want to put that much strain on a long, 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 long journey mm. on a 300cc with all the luggage, because that's going to put, bearing in mind it's 149 kilos for the bike, 
I'm an extra 100 kilos on top of that, and then maybe, I don't know, 50 kilos in weight of luggage, that's like 400 kilos. Mm. That's quite a weight, and I don't know whether that would be fair to expect this to do that journey well. It probably would, to be fair, yeah. but I'd feel more comfortable myself on an 800. However, that being said, to and from work, superb. If you wanted a weekend away, superb. If you wanted to go up and down the country in the UK, superb. Or well, any country. Well, yeah, if you're watching this in any other country. Germany, we have a lot of viewers in Germany. Mm. And in Asia, I believe. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't see any problem with it at all. I'm really impressed. Thoughts? You've only ridden this for a short amount of time, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I rode it for 20 minutes after I put it together. Um, and I actually really like it. I'd happily use it to buzz back and forth you know, from work. What do you like most about it? How it rides. Explain. It's, just, it's so easy to ride. It's so well balanced and just easy to manoeuvre. And you, you can't really fault the way it rides. No. Anything you don't like? Um, single cylinder. You've got that, that 125 single cylinder buzziness going on. Yes, I agree. When it's on tick over, it does have a little bit of a 125 e vibe about it even when you're riding it you just you get that single thing going on you do you get that single cylinder vibe sound but not any feedback there's no, no buzzy when you're riding it it doesn't vibrate it's really smooth and really well put together but the suspension wise and the choice of tires and everything it's, it's brilliant it is yeah very well thought out. It's money well spent. So to be honest, Zontis, and we're not just saying this because we sell these bikes. We're saying this because we are actually very impressed with them. Yeah. Money well spent, Zontis. Money well spent. Now, this is the demo bike. And if you're in our area or if you want to travel to our area, this bike is available for a demo ride. So pop along onto our website, www.armotorcycles.co.uk. Drop us an email or send us a, um, a, a, a thingy message on that face plant thing. What is it? Facebook Messenger. That's the one, that. I use that one instead of face, face plant, whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, face plant, isn't that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there you go. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have one of these or have one on order, let us know your thoughts and why you went for this bike over the X or the R. We should talk about price. Oh yeah, price. How much is it? Well, it's £4,099 on the road. On the road, with a oh, charger. On the road, with the free charger. So that's free charger, free pluggy thing, free registration, road and tax. free road tax. And we'll stick the fuel in it. All you've got to do is put some insurance on it. And pay for the bike. Um, yeah, no. Do that. Mm. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. We are back next week with more bikes and i'll tell you what we've got coming soon we've got the wk250 versus the wk400 versus the wk650 that is coming soon so stay tuned for that one too we will also have more on the mustang more on the um cortina more on the bobber build and more on whatever else we think of that so until next time please ride and drive carefully but have fun bye